In this video, we take a look at a paper two practice question that comes from the Computer Science 9618 AS Cambridge curriculum. This one's gonna focus on 1D and 2D arrays, which are pretty popular questions that come up on paper two. So let's take a look at this 1D array practice question. We can see we can pick up three out of the 75 points on this part of our test. So it says the following pseudocode includes reference to a one-dimensional array. Declare student grade, it's an array with a lower bound of one and an upper bound of five, and it's of the data type char, which means it's gonna hold one character. Then they declare n as an integer, x as a character. They're assigning the value of three to n and student grade three, because that's what n represents, to x, which is the char. So we're taking whatever the character is inside this 1D array, and we're loading it into x. Use the correct technical terms to explain the meaning of 1 colon 5 in this pseudocode. So all this pseudocode they gave us really serves no purpose. What they want to know is, do you know what the 1 and the 5 refers to? Well, the 1 refers to the lower bound of the array. That is where they're starting. They're starting at index 1, not index 0. But what about the 5? Well, that refers to the upper bound of the array. You have to mention that 1 refers to the lower bound, and that five refers to the upper bound. You cannot say that it refers to the upper bound and lower bound or the lower bound and upper bound of the array. They're gonna write in E, which means not enough. You're not showing which number is the lower bound and which number is the upper bound. So you wanna make sure that you reference both the number which in this case one is the lower bound and the number that represents the upper bound, which in this case is five. Use the correct technical term to complete the following statement. Integer n is used as the blank to student grade. When I look up here, I see student grade n. What is this referring to? Well, anytime we have a one-dimensional array, we reference uh, the specific element we want by referencing the index to student grade. Now let's take a look at a 2D array practice question from the same exam. Now, for 2D arrays, they can be a little tricky at first. You have to be familiar with how 2D arrays uh, work. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem, and then we'll go over how 2D arrays are handled. A 2D array picture contains data representing a bitmap image. Each element of the array represents one pixel of the image. The image is grayscale encoded where the value of each pixel ranges from zero, representing black, to 255, representing white, with intermediate values representing different levels of gray. The following is an example of an image and the corresponding data values for the picture array. When you're looking at a 2D array, it works both on what is rows and columns and it is called by using the row and then the column. That is how it works. So when we do picture I, J, we're referring to both the row and the column. So let's take a look at some examples of that. Here's the value 240. What row are we in? What column are we in? That's what we need to know. Well, I can see that they're starting at row one, not row zero. Uh, you wanna pay attention to that because sometimes they will start at row zero. But I'm gonna start at row one. Well, what column is this? Well, that is column one. So my row and column for 240 is one, one. Let's take a look at another value. Here's another instance of 240. What row are we on? Well, we're on row one row two. I can see the second instance of 240 is on row two. What column is it in? Well, it's not in column one, it's not in column two, but it is in column three. So it's on row two, column three. Here's the value of 150. What row is it on? What column is it in? Well, we can see it's on row four, column six. Here's row one, here's row two, row three, here's row four. So I know it's in row four. What column? Here's column one, column two, three, four, five, and six. So the value of 150 is on row four, column six. Here's a last uh, example. Another instance of 240. This is on row eight, column eight. Row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
The row is what the first number corresponds to. The second number refers to the column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what we want to do is, is we want to go through and traverse this 2D array by using a nested loop I and J. I is going to represent our rows. J is going to represent our columns in this example because we want to stay on row one and look at column one. Then to get to the next value, we want to stay on row one and go to column two. Then we want to stay on row one and go to column three and so forth. So let's take a look at what they want us to do. It says a function lighten is required to lighten the image. Lightening an image may cause it to burn out. An image is said to be burnt out if any pixel is set to the maximum value of 255. Now it says the function lighten will increase the value of each pixel by 10%. Return true if the resultant image is burnt out. And again, they say it's burnt out if any of those pixels is set to the maximum value of 255. Now, um, we're going to assume if it's uh, set to the maximum value of 255 or greater. 255 is the uh, maximum value. So if we do, if we increase it by 10% and it comes out to 255 or higher, it's going to be burnt out. Now they did already declare a picture as a global variable and we can see it has eight rows, it has eight columns. Now because all of those are integers, I know that when I multiply by 10%, I'm not going to get always a nice whole round number. I could hypothetically get a decimal. So what I need to do is I need to look at the appendix. And when I look at the appendix, which is going to be on the last page of my exam, I'm going to see how to convert to an integer. So we have function lighten returns boolean. Nothing goes inside the parentheses because it's not accepting any parameters. I need to declare i and j as integers. You are allowed to declare multiple, multiple variables of the same data type on the same line. You don't have to though. I've done new p value as an integer and I have burnt out as my boolean because this function lighten is going to return a boolean value. I'm going to set burnout to false. Now when you write code like actual code, the boolean values are set to false by default. Cambridge wants to see you assign the value false to it. So we're going to do that and we want to do that outside of our loop. Then I'm going to start my 4i. This is going to control the rows. I want to start at row 1, but I want to go through column 1 to 8 on row 1. That's what my inner loop j handles. So I have 4i equals 1 to 8, 4j equals 1 to 8. Now I need to get the new pixel value because it's been increased by 10%. I need to convert that to an integer. Picture 1 comma 1 times 1.1 will increase it by 10%. If you multiply it by 0.1, you're actually decreasing it because uh, you're subtracting 10%. We want to add 10% to it, so we multiply it by 1.1. If you do 0.1 or 0.9, you're not going to get the same result. Now, what, once I have my new p-value, I want to put that inside row 1 column one. When this loop gets done running, J will increment to two. I'm still on row one, but column two. When that gets done running, J will increment to three, so I'll be on row one, column three. When J gets to eight, I'll be on row one, column eight. Then what will happen when we iterate back around, I will increment to two, and then the inner loop where j runs one to eight, that will run another eight times and allow me to do row two. Now, we, I ran out of room for everything else I would need, so I just moved this over to a new page. So now, picking up where we left off, inside my loop, if the new p value, which is the new pixel value I got, if it's greater than or equal to 255, I know the resultant pixel is burnt out. So I have burnt out. I'm going to set that equal to true. I'm going to use my int if. Now, this follows the new pseudocode uh, 
guide, uh, we're allowed to put then on the same line. And that's based on the new pseudocode uh, guide. You can put it on the same line. You don't have to put it on its own line, which is going to save us a lot of space. I'm going to close my inner loop next J. That follows the new pseudocode uh, handout. So make sure you don't use in four. They want you to close those loops using whatever the four value was. So this is four J. I want to close that with next J. And I want to close my outer loop next I. This will allow me to traverse the entire 2D array. And if any pixel is greater than or equal to 255, burnout becomes true. Then all I need to do is I'm return burnt out. Why am I returning that? Because it's a Boolean value that's being returned by the function. Now we had our function header. Don't forget your function closer end function. Let's take a look at another 1D and 2D array practice problem from a separate exam. Individual elements in a one dimensional array are referenced using an integer value that is used as the subscript to the array. Give the technical terms for the minimum and maximum values the subscript may take. What in the world are they talking about here? Well, they're talking about the minimum and maximum value. In the last 1D array question, they're asking, what did that one reference? What did that minimum value reference? Well, that references the lower bound. What about the maximum value? In the last 1D array question we looked at, that was five. What did that maximum value five represent? That represented the upper bound. This is another way they could ask about a 1D array question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 2D array question. A 2D array picture contains data representing a bitmap image, just like the last one. Each element of the array represents one pixel of the image, just like the last one. The image is grayscale encoded where the value of each pixel ranges from zero, representing black, to 255, representing white, with intermediate values representing different levels of gray, identical to the last one. A graphics program needs a procedure flip to flip or reflect the image. An example of an image before and after the function is as follows. So they show us before the flip and after the flip. So what we're doing is we're taking what's on the uh, first row and we're moving it to the last row. And you can see this, or excuse me, the first column moving it to the last uh, column here. So the first column is being moved to the last column. The last column is being moved to the first column and everything uh, in between. So it's being flipped around. This one can be a little difficult at first, but if you break it down, it becomes much more simpler. Trying to solve it all together at once as a whole can be incredibly overwhelming and make you feel like you just can't get it. And that's not the case at all. So let's break it down. Where do I start? What row and what column? Well, I know I want to start either at row one, column one, or row one, column eight. And I need to put, if I'm starting at row one, column eight, I need to put row one, column eight in row one, column one, or I can start at row one, column one, and then put it into an array, row one, column eight. I need to decide, okay, where am I going to start? Now I need my I and J values for my nested loop. My inner loop controls what is moving every iteration. I need to decide, okay, is this the row or is this the column? Well, if I'm starting at row one, column eight, after I store row one, column eight into after the flip array, column row one, column one, then I'm gonna move to column seven. I'm gonna store that into the new array. Then I'm gonna move to column six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one, and then I'm gonna go to my next uh, row. And there's multiple ways uh, I can do this, but I know that the column is gonna be uh, changing, so that's gonna be my inner loop. I know J is gonna be iterating every single time. Now, the next question I ask myself is, how do I traverse the row and column, which is easy, but also have it match to the after flip image? Is that possible? Here's what I mean. How do I, in a nested for loop, takes what's in row one, column eight and move it to row one, column one, because I'm using I and I'm using J. Well, 
I can't have J be two different values each time. It's, it's only going to represent one value. So how in the world do I do that? How do I take what's in row one, column seven, and move it to row one, column two, in the new 2D array? Well, I see that I have five rows and eight columns, and it's always going to be uh, five rows and eight columns, because I see that in the pseudocode here. I can use that to my advantage, and I can work with that to allow me to write the code. So let's go ahead and let's write this procedure flip. Now, it says the flip procedure, so this is not a function. Procedures do not return any values. So we're going to declare i and j as integer. We need that for our nested for loop. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new 2D array. We're going to call it new picture. It's going to have um, a lower bound of 1, an upper bound of 5 for the rows, a lower bound of 1, and an upper bound of 8 for the columns. So I'm going to do 4i equals 1 to 5. That will allow me to traverse each row, and I'm going to do 4j equals 1 to 8. Now, if that's as far as you can make it on the exam, you will get points. You want to close out uh, these loops, though. You want to do next i, next j in procedure, and you'll pick up the majority of the points. But we want to be able to show them that we can problem solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do new picture i. That's the row I'm on, row 1. What column? 9 minus j. What's 9 minus 1? 8. What am I putting in row 1, column 8? I'm putting in whatever's inside my standard picture, 1, row 1, column 1. What, do you, what, is, what, what do you mean? What does that look like? So here's my picture. So this is, this is picture IJ right here. My new picture is the one after the flip. So before the flip, I'm trying to take what's in row 1 and put it in row 1, 9 minus j. Well, the first time this runs, what's 9 minus 1? That is 8. What am I putting there? I'm putting what's inside row 1, column 1 before the flip. When j increments and becomes 2, what am I putting in from row 1, column 2? I'm going to put that in row 1, column 7 because 9 minus 2 is 7. This allows me to traverse the before flip image from beginning to end and the after flip image from end to beginning by doing the 9 minus j. I don't need an extra loop. I don't have to mess around with trying to create different values uh, for j. That's all we're going to do. That's all we need to do. So I'm going to close out my j. I'm going to close out my i. And I'm going to end the procedure. And just like that, with a very short pseudocode, I'm able to flip the image. And this will work for any image that they can throw at us. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next computer science video.